but <clears throat> from what I've read and even seeing sightings around here today, they can go from a two two wheel drive to four wheel drive in just an instant and go very fast. And when you think about that, here you got an animal that might be eight or ten foot tall, and his exposure to being seen would go from a lot to almost nothing. As I, I the times I've been in the, in the swamp, even your ferns are, are four, three or four or five foot tall. It wouldn't take much to hide, uh, you know, in our swamps because the just the vegetation is tall enough. And I wonder if there aren't cases where people think they see a bear and they actually see a Bigfoot because they're actually not seeing them that well. And uh, <clears throat> they're, going to, they're going to all fours. The first person to kill one, he claimed, was Daniel Boone. Um, what he did with it, again, no refrigeration. Uh, that was the funny part about this is that uh, quite often these small communities, the articles would refer to the local brew as being a possible source of, uh, of uh, these imaginary beasts. But, you know, back then, the small towns, everybody had their own uh, alcohol. And uh, so that was a common comment. Is I wonder if it had something to do with the local brew that was causing these sightings of these weird animals. Current Bigfoot research. <clears throat> Lots of local sightings uh, per BFRO and other sites. There's a number of websites. Probably BFRO is the best. Um, I think they're up to, in Michigan, 179. I see Jim Sherman back here someplace. Uh, uh, I know he's a Bigfoot researcher. I'm, what's the backlog, is Jim? And anyhow, I know they usually run two or 300 backlog uh, of sightings. They like to investigate them and try to weed out the hoaxes and the misidentifications, but there, there's a, a lot of reports, you know, that they haven't been able to look at. Of course, our website uh, that Brett put together, uh, it's got my uh, incidents, I'm up to 38. In the last two weeks, I've got four more reports of, of sightings of Bigfoot in the five counties that I have more or less concentrated on. I just, last night, I got another one over by Asco. People come around the corner, there's a, a lady did, and there was a Bigfoot standing in the road. And uh, it's just amazing. Back a week ago, I went to the downtown development uh, uh, company or whatever downtown. I had to get permission to use the vacant lot. And here's like like nine uh, businessmen in the government uh, that I, I needed to talk to. We talked about Bigfoot and this young fellow, he was only 40 years old, he came in and he says, I saw one. I just couldn't believe it. <laughs> to tell nine or 10 other people that you saw one, that's pretty brave. Yes? Where was the locale in Oscoda? Uh, it, was, it was over by, uh, I think it was between 65 and Oscoda. But there are so many, you know, it's just it's not hard. I do want to get, get through this. Uh, we're going to have a good uh, panel discussion at 1 o'clock, and I'm sure. Uh, there'll be time for questions, so write down your questions if you have some of you would, please, okay? I've read that there's estimated uh, 5,000 sightings per year in the U.S., and most are not reported. But, you know, if they do, their family or friends ridicule them and never mention it until they see a friendly face like a, a BFRO or, or somebody like myself. Or Dr. Mellor, I'm sure he gets lots of uh, reports. Of the ones I studied, they broke it down of mine, uh, I think I had about 35 reports. <clears throat> and this is the thing that I think that people need to recognize. Sightings and eye shine is only one part of indication of Bigfoot. Uh, vocalizations, uh, if somebody says they heard something, they don't think it was an elk or a, a bear or something. You know, I try to compare them to the, the, the tapes you can get on the BFRO. Uh, Tree knocks, I really haven't had too many people where they don't recognize it. You almost got to have a continuous recorder, I think, to catch those. Tree breaks, I've found, uh, and others, and uh, I think they're pretty special. But, you know, what what animals, I, I know bears will break trees in the breeding season, but the one I found over by uh, Roscommon, or by uh, St. Helen, actually, you can see the teeth marks. And uh, the ones I found, you, they were too big to be a, a teeth, a jaw type thing. Strict stick structures, I found six. I know there was another one I got here that might be a stick structure. Rock throws, 
uh, it's a pretty scary thing when you're out fishing or something and have a big old rock coming into the into the lake or the pond next to you. I think I had that happen one time. Footprints uh, occasionally, but you know Michigan gets a lot of rain. You don't find too many footprints, and uh, of course are they horses? But uh, just look at the last. Well, every week we seem to get another inch of rain, which is a great thing. <laughs> Dr. Mellon says he's had a in Idaho they've had a drought for the last ten years, so you know having rain is not a bad thing. Property damage had one right up north here, about 12 miles. Uh, this guy claims he had tree breaks. His house was pushed down a couple of times. He had a, a big door ripped off his shed and took the whoever <clears throat> took 50 pounds of carrots. Didn't tear apart, just took it. And uh, he says they every month they'll hear wood knocks or or uh, uh, <clears throat> vocalizations. But but uh, yeah, he said he had eye shine too. But you know, he's in an area that is very wild, and uh, it could be. <clears throat> but then I'm just analyzing the BFR reports uh, in, the, in the five counties that I sort of kept track of, and, and here, Ogemaw, we're here, Oscoda to the north of us. That's where Dr. Mellon and I got sort of, I was lost, and he didn't realize it yesterday, flying around. But uh, thank goodness for GPS. <laughs> We were about four miles from Mayo and, and, and we turned and we were going west and I didn't realize it. You know, I thought I knew the road and man, this isn't looking right. Hey, let's pay attention to GPS. And we turned right, there's Mayo, four, four miles. Iosco County, <clears throat> Gladwin. So 28 as of uh, July is what it ended up just in these five counties. So that's pretty significant. These are incident reports. Uh, you can get them online. Uh, I've got some of them listed over here. Uh, that I've kept track of very briefly. I don't think you probably can read them anyhow. But that, but I got this chart over here, and I think that's out of date. That's a, a, a March 2012, so there should be a lot more red dots on there. For some reason, Michigan, the uh, concentration of sightings is through this area in the lower part of the state, around Traverse City, and then uh, I think more of the western UP is, gets a fair amount of sightings. So maybe they're not every place, even though there's habitat all over the state, they're not every place. John Green was uh, probably the grandfather uh, of uh, Bigfoot research. He was a newspaper editor, traveled all over the country uh, documenting uh, Bigfoot uh, evidence, and he claimed that you need at least 20 inches of rain per year. Now I think I heard Dr. Meldrum hold more like 15 inches, but you know, it's surprising where they can be. It's, they got a place to hide, and they got enough water, There's a, they could be any place. That's sort of the sightings. I should add more up in this area. I'm sure there's a lot more sightings, but they didn't seem to be that many. But it's amazing to me that the Midwest, uh, we got a lot of rain. We're a temperate climate. We get 25 inches of rain a year. When I did this, I went, we only had 123, but we're up to 179 now. So, uh, In fact, I noticed you know, just a couple days ago that BFRO uh, Ohio exceeds Oregon in number of BFRO sightings. And you know, I always thought of the West Coast is where the Bigfoot is. In fact, you, you read articles, uh, books yet yeah, today. Uh, the last one I read talked about it all being out West. Well, that's, that's not the case. They're obviously in, in the East and the Southern areas where there's lots of rain. <clears throat> Many footprint casts and pictures. Study of footprints called it's an I'm not sure, I probably didn't I pronounce that right. Uh, that is most uh, tangible evidence of Bigfoot existence. We we really don't get that much. Uh, overall, though, I, I really think oh hoaxing is alone. You'd have to have an army putting stuff out in the woods. Uh, and, and who's looking? Uh, quoting Dr. Mellon, he he told me he had over 200 footprint casts, about two dozen of them himself that he casts. Uh, Uncle Sam, I don't think he's here, but he, uh, I belong to the Optimus uh, Club, and here, uh, about a year ago, he come up to me on his, with a cell phone. See, see what I found? <clears throat> this right over is five miles south of St. Helen. Uh, he took it with his cell phone. I had to take it into the AT&T. He didn't have a clue on it. I downloaded it. But you can see the five toes, uh, mid tarsal break, and the heel was six, seven, inches wide, uh, he claimed that the, that footprint, his, he's got size 12 boot, 
they measure 13 and a half inches, and he says there were three inches longer than that. So a 16 and a half inch a footprint, which is right in the realm of a potential male Bigfoot. I think this has been rained on. I didn't see the pictures until a month afterwards. We, we couldn't go and find it, but if you can see along the edge there, uh, it must have rained. It must have been clay soil, and it rained off the edge. But I think the think the uh, <clears throat> Bigfoot actually hit the side of the two track. You can see like scratch marks right there, and then his toes are, are right there. So uh, uh, he did say there was a half track across the, the two track, but he didn't take pictures of it. But that's not uncommon since they may have a joint in the in the middle of the foot called the mid tarsal break. So we have lim limited good photos. Uh, Patterson Gimlin uh, certainly was one of the best. I, uh, you'll see pictures over here on the wall. I had uh, breakfast with uh, uh, Bob Gimlin about three years ago down to Ohio. <clears throat> Patterson died of cancer in, in the 70s. Uh, but uh, if I ever met a true blue cowboy, it was uh, Bob Gimlin. Honest as the day is long. And uh, <clears throat> that year, he's a horse trainer, and he had fell off. I think he was about 85 at the time, and off a horse and broke his broke his shoulder. Uh, so he had his arm was in a cast, but just a, a neat guy. And uh, you know he had a chance of killing that Bigfoot. He had a 30 out six, but but they had agreed not to shoot it at the time. But it's very hard to get pictures at night, and a lot of the sightings are at night. That's a Patterson Gimlin film. If you uh, haven't seen that, and almost everybody has. This is uh, <clears throat> called the, uh, a lot of people will ask, how come no trail cam pictures? Uh, this is called the Pennsylvania Jacobs pictures. Uh, you know, these were taken with a trail cam. Look at the long legs on this animal. Um, <clears throat> the DNR there wants to say it's a bear with scurvy. But uh, the, the physiology between a Bigfoot and a, and a uh, bear there's another picture of it, the light, just the, the light, uh, I think, was that right there. But there's a bear from the same camera. Short legs, black, thick fur, totally different animal uh, from a Bigfoot. Uh, I don't know, Dr. Melrose, maybe, I don't know, I, I wish I'd taken notes. In my opinion, this is the real Bigfoot right there. Supposedly a DNR officer in some state. Does anybody know what state that was taken in? Washington. Was that Washington State? That's the Cliff Crook. Oh, you didn't think it was? Uh, well, <laughs> it's I, I said, if it's true, I thought that was the real Bigfoot, but I know they said something about the vegetation not being right. But it's hard for me to understand why a guy would turn in a picture and then not take credit for it. Normally, people want a million bucks. They turn in a good picture, but, but apparently we say it's not. So maybe you can explain I got a couple hundred. Huh? You got a couple hundred. A couple hundred pictures? Dollars. Oh, did he? Oh, okay, okay. Well, that's the way it goes. Uh, this year, I, if you guys went to, went to the conference last night, I was going to have the 21 best Bigfoot videos that was taken in Florida. And amazing to me, uh, they had a self-delete function in the program. And I thought it was pretty good, but somehow it deleted itself on my computer. Uh, DVD, and if you bring that same website, it says this video no longer exists. So, um, a lot of them are common pictures that have been taken around the country. <clears throat> Just a little repetition here. My two sons did a, a mockumentary, the Shaw Bigfoot Project. It's now on YouTube, and I don't think I would have talked to very many groups without this. We're going to play just a little bit of that, maybe to wake you up and to see what my sons did. So I hope you can see it, particularly these people back. Western Hill has North American Sasquatch. All the lines don't have big folk. Can you hear Pay it? attention. Can you guys I'll hear it? I hope you enjoy it. I think you'll find some details that are lesser known to the general public. But first, a word from our corporate sponsor. <laughs> Jack Link's Beef Jerky presents Messing with Sasquatch.
jerky. Feed your wilds. Okay, it's the uh, Shaw Bigfoot expedition. We're heading into our uh, our campsite. As you can see, it's very, yes, wooded, very thick, almost impassable. <laughs> impassable foliage. But somehow there's a road, so we're passing. Tomorrow night it's impassable. Say hi, Dad. Hi, hi. Say hi, Uncle Jim. I keep smelling something. Say hi, Ryan. Hello. Okay, excellent. More to come. Okay, we're out in the, uh, out in the deep woods. We've uh, been uh, traveling for quite a while. We're, we're trying to get our, our bearing on which way to, which way to go. Um, um, Ryan, you, you uh, what, what do you think? No idea. No, no, no. Oh, let's take uh, let's take Segan Road. That sound, Segan Road sound good? That sounds pretty yeah, good. Yeah, okay. Oh, yeah, Segan Road sounds good to me. Okay, let's go. All right, so we've uh, made it to the, the Shaw campground looking for Sasquatch. Apparently, they can be really observant, so what we want to do is, is uh, make a bit of a, a peace offering. This is something that uh, they do with lowland gorillas. That's a large primate behavior. So what we want to do is, is offer this up on a on a stump or something like that, and uh, try to have the uh, I don't know subservient uh, uh, body language. So uh, this is we're gonna we're gonna do this right now. Okay. So head down, eyes down. It means that uh, we're coming to peace. We're not threatening. some stuff, so uh, here's hoping. All right. Well, it's the next day. We are we're coming close to where the, uh, the airport that we had left yesterday, and uh, we're just going to see if, you know, it, it doesn't always work sometimes the raccoon gets to it first, or, or a bear, or maybe even a deer, but you can tell that when a deer eats it, he leaves a huge mess. You want a raccoon, usually they take a bite, and then they take the rest of the apple, but they leave a bite. So we're going to check and see if, if that might be the case. We're hoping we get lucky. Apparently they're more generous beings than we thought. <laughs> That's on, on uh, YouTube under Shaw Bigfoot Project. It's in three parts. And uh, if you get a chance, take a look at it. It's, it's rather fun. Of course, I am a little bit biased. You know, my sons. <laughs> vocalizations. A lot of vocalizations. And I know this afternoon, uh, Jim Sherman has got some excellent uh, vocals for us. He's taken uh, around mid-Michigan. But I think the thing you need to recognize is that uh, these animals, the males, uh, are about four times the size of a human. An average human or a man would be about 200 pounds, two liters of air. But if you got an animal that's 800 pounds, they're four times as big, they could have eight liters of air. And I think that explains, uh, they're excellent swimmers from what I've read. Uh, a lot of times they've been shot at, but I suspect with that much air, they could run for another 25 miles without, even with a bullet uh, through their lungs, without even slowing down. I, I'm a deer hunter. I probably killed a uh, hundred deer myself, and I know they can go. If you don't hit them right, they can go a long ways. If you don't get a vital shot, uh, they can go a long ways, and they certainly don't have have the uh, chest capacity that a that a uh, bigfoot would have. <clears throat> Some of the talk that uh, I became aware of this, some Murray Chatter, Sierra Sounds, um, <clears throat> uh, to a Missouri conference I went to. Uh, it was actually a, a BFRO expedition, 
and the Scott Nelson, the retired Navy cryptolinguist, uh, spoke.